Hey everybody, my name is Alex, and in this video I'm going to go over setting up a RAID 5 using MDADM in Ubuntu server. So I'm going to do LSBLK, and I have these eight drives which I'm going to be connecting through RAID 5. And RAID 5 is basically a parity. Uh, my understanding is if I have eight drives here, one of them is going to be a parity, and the rest of them are going to be usable. So if I have, these are all basically two terabytes. If I have eight of them, that's 16 terabytes. 14 will be usable. One disk can fail, and as long as I replace that disk before another one fails and rebuild the parity, I, my data will be safe. So I can have up to one drive fail, but I need to replace that drive as quick as possible and rebuild the parity. Uh, and the rebuilding that parity can take a little while. So, uh, you know, maybe up to a day. These are smaller drives, but they're also very slow. So I'm, I'm not too sure how long it would take, but I know if it's anything like on raid when I was using that and building the parity, uh, that took like a whole day. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just sudo apt um, update and sudo apt uh, upgrade just to make sure the system is as up to date as possible. It's always a good idea. And if you do not have MDADM, which is installed with Ubuntu server by default, you can install it pretty easily. Just sudo apt install MDADM. I already have it. And I'm not going to partition the drives. I'm just going to set it up uh, on the whole drive here. So I, I don't care too much about the partitions. The command is going to be sudo mdadm dash dash create. I'm doing verbose so I can just see what's going on. Uh, it's going to be the uh, md0 is going to be the device that I set up. RAID level is going to be five. I have eight RAID devices, and that's going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, and uh, G, and H. And I should just be able to run that. And uh, it's just letting me know. This is Verbo, so it's just telling me all the things that it's going to basically be doing. Yes, I do want to create the array. And we can see that now there's dev MD0. So you can check um, information about the drive or the, uh, the basically the RAID array that you just set up by doing sudo mdadm dash dash detail and then we created it on dev md0. So you can see there is eight devices listed here with one of them being a spare. And you can see it's doing the rebuild, which I guess is like setting up the parity. So we've got one spare device, eight devices are working, seven are active like in the RAID itself. And we can see as expected 14 terabytes or 12.73 tibby bytes. And then we have, um, like I said, one of those drives being set up as a spare. So we should be good. It's going to take a little bit of time. Let me see. Um, yeah, it's going to probably do a little bit of prep <laughs> to get everything set up. So I want to be very careful. I'm actually going to let this finish before I start moving data to it. It's just a good idea. Um, and then, okay, so now we, we want to actually be able to use this. And it's fine to set up this while we use it. So I'm going to do sudo make file system. So mkfs-t ext4 dev md0. So we're going to set up an ext4 file system on this device, this RAID array. And this will take just a moment to complete. It's going to be, so I, my understanding also with RAID 5 is that writes take longer. 
reads are actually pretty good. So when you're writing data to your RAID 5 array, it, it might be a little bit slow, but reading that data should be fine. So if, if it's something where you're doing lots of writes and reads, uh, like you might have a little bit of trouble, but for me, it's mainly going to be just used as a backup uh, for anything as like a, a network share um, that I'm going to store a lot of files on that I'll just be reading them. Like I'm just going to write them once and then read them from different devices. So it should be fine for my use case, but uh, keep that in mind. And then once this has a file system on it, we can get the UUID associated with it and set it up to be mounted automatically when we have uh, the file, the uh, operating system booted. So this does take a little bit of time here. I'm just going to check the status to see if anything's changed. Uh, nope, it looks like it's still still getting started. So we now, if we do lsblk-f, um, hmm, I was kind of expecting there to be Looks like the UUID is here, but I don't actually see it. Well, we're going to use this UUID to see if we can get it mounted. So let's just do sudo nano etc. And I have this old one that I created. I actually did RAID 1. I'm going to do that. And then control X, Y, enter. And we should be able to do sudo mount dash av. It says it's successfully mounted. Let's see, df dash h. Um, and it's showing as 12 terabytes. I don't know why we're missing <laughs> two terabytes from it. Um, maybe it's doing tibby bytes. Uh, Most likely that's what it is. So you can, so, okay, so, um, yeah, let's just assume, oh yeah, it looks like 13 terabytes. So it's just the uh, the way how the conversions are done between terabytes, and TB bytes, and all that stuff. And I'm actually going to do sudo tune 2fs-r0. That's removing all of the reserved space because... Um, I don't need it. I don't need reserved space because it's not the main file system. So we would want some reserved space for like our actual uh, drive for the operating system, but we're going to set that to zero. And now if we do DF dash H, we're back up to 13 terabytes uh, before you can see it was 12. So I'm losing like a whole terabyte to reserve space that I don't need. Um, and that close enough reflects it's probably rounding up from 12.73 tibby bytes. Okay, so if in the future a drive has failed, you can check using the detail, um, and you should see like one of these has failed. Oh, we're at 1%, so we are making progress. Um, you'll see like one of these has been failed, and you're going to want to remove whichever one has failed. So you would do something like sudo mdadm dash dash manage dev md0. So we're managing the RAID array we just made. Remove dev sda, if that was the failed one. Um, and once you remove it, you can then replace it with the next disk. Uh, so you would just remove that one physically, physically remove it, and then you would add it, and it, the, the command's almost the same. Instead of, oh, I didn't actually, I didn't actually enter that one, but it would be sudo mdadm manage dev md0 again, and then dash dash add dev sda or whatever drive uh, sdy, you know, whatever drive that that you're going to be adding to that RAID array. And then it's going to start the rebuild process again. So you'll have to go through that whole parity uh, building process, which could take, like I said, up to a day uh, for it to 
completely be ready and resilient again. So that's it. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm gonna use this as just like a backup for some larger files that I have that I want to share between all of my servers. Uh, I've been it's been a pain because I have been just sharing like a drive on each server, whereas I just want things that I'm going to be sharing across them, like scripts and stuff that I run. I want to just be able to put on a single uh, network share, and I'll probably make another video for the network share. It's just going to be a Samba share, which is actually really easy. Uh, it's going to be an insecure one where it's basically anybody on the network can get access to this. So if you have access to my network, you'll have access to basically read and write. Although maybe I'll, I don't know, I don't really want to set it up as one that needs a username and password, but I might. Uh, we'll see. But that's the end of this video. Uh, I now have a RAID drive set up and it is mounted to media slash raid. Oh, I, you know, I didn't really cover that part, but um, you would just do sudo maker media raid to make the directory. And then in sudo nano, let's see, file system, um, you would just put the drive or the uh, folder that you're gonna be mounting it to, the UUID that you got when you set up the ext4, and then I just always use defaults, no a time, no fail, and then zero, zero. So you can pretty much keep all this the same. If you want to use a different mount directory, that's fine as well. And your UI, you should use your own UUID. Um, so to get out of nano, it was just control X. And then if you changed it, you would do Y to save and then enter. And that's it. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.